So, first Corvette to ever make it into the shop. Picked this up with uh, Rick today in Toronto. And uh, I hate Toronto. I hate driving in Toronto. My favorite view of the city is from the rearview mirror. But I think it was worth it. Um, nice old uh, Stingray, it's a 76. And this will be the next project for Truth For Teens. So we're able to make a little, give a little bit of money to Rick for selling the Fleet Master. So we, uh, somebody got a hold of Rick through Truth For Teens and donated this thing. Um, needs some work and just like the Fleet Master is a nice fit for the couple that bought it. I think this is a perfect car for Rick and the uh, youth to work on. It uh, is a 76, has 92,000 on the odometer, but who knows. Um, hasn't ran for about two years, but I just threw some fuel down the carb there and put some extra fuel in the tank, because the tank was pretty well empty. And it seems to run okay, no brakes, no horn. Uh, passenger window doesn't work. Um, needs a back bumper, the back bumper pretty well disintegrated because of our wonderful climate. So I think Rick got a hold of one in Hamilton, which is nice and close by. And a lot of little flaws here, like the, the fiberglass here, and there was a big spot on the driver's side, on the other side there. But uh, I think basically we'll scuff it down and uh, fix some of these spots, tune it up, do all the brakes on it, brake lines, get it running really well. And then uh, we might even paint it. I think the headlights work, but they don't pop up and down. And that's just uh, part of uh, owning a Stingray. So um, there's some wiring issues that doesn't turn on with the key. So I ran a wire right to the starter there. Um, and the battery's behind the seat, so I just jump it and uh, plug it in there. <laughs> Run the wire over to the battery so it runs. And uh, drove it around the yard a couple times. Um, first Corvette I ever drove, I think. It's awkward sitting in there. You can only look forward. Perfect for Rick. Um, maybe he'll grow a mullet. We got all winter to tear this apart and hopefully cruise around to go to speaking engagements for this next year. So here we go. So people like donating Rick cars, but it somehow only ends up costing me money. Rick is one of God's favorites, but I wish people would stop giving him holy cars. But regardless, we're gonna do some work for him just to get it through safety. The frame is in good shape, and the car really is actually not too bad. It's got brand new rubber on it. It's nice that it's complete, but uh, we'll weld some uh, floor pans in there and do some brake lines for them and then uh, send it off to get safety. Uh, the frame is actually in really good shape. Everything else was actually working. So now we just gotta line up this door and get the door latch and the handles working a little better, pull the door panels off. But basically when we close the door, it doesn't line up at all. You can tell right now that, that this is actually down quite a bit. So the glass doesn't line up nice. And then what happens is the glass actually rubs on the fiberglass here and it actually Oh yeah, so what are you going to do? So we're going to loosen it up, uh, loosen the bolts for the door jam mounts here. And then we're just going to use the transmission jack just to raise it up. And what you want to do is raise it a little higher than where you want it to sit uh, because these are really heavy doors. And then we're going to tighten it all up and then uh, give her a shut. <laughs> and if she lines up, it's good. Uh, and then crank everything tight. If not, then you have to open it up, loosen them again, lift it up a little bit more. How do you get out the bolts? And to get out the bolts is a little bit more difficult than usual. It looks like this one latches locked. <laughs> and so to get at the bolts, actually, you can't go from this way. They're actually threaded in from here, and you need to take off this little cover here, and then you need to actually take off part of the dash as well so that you can get right up into here. Just these screws here? Uh, yep. <laughs> That's some technology for those days. It's for the guys with the short arms like me. That's a lot of stuff to get out of the way to get at three bolts. You need to get all the way inside there. And to get in there, you need to remove the dash. To remove the dash, you need to undo the steering, and then you need to pull the column forward and drop it down. You can rest it on the seat, but we have no seats. So it's pretty similar for most of the Corvettes. 
Uh, some of them you have to take out this console, some you don't. So what are the only wires and bulbs? And then all the only other wires are all just bulbs for uh, engine lights, and such. Okay. And a ground wire. Okay, it's a good time to uh, clean the lenses and go over them. So when you put the dash back in, or when you take it out, don't be too worried about where these light bulbs go. Uh, they're all just light bulbs, uh, minus this here. This is, uh, I don't know, something else. And there's a ground wire. But all the light bulbs actually, it says right on the back of them. So gray, gray wire. Get these bulbs out, you just press them to the side. This one shows you pink and tan, pink and tan. Got the uh, speedo unhooked here. So it's just the speedo wire here, it's unhooked. So right here there's a little tab, just press this tab down. So it's pretty easy to put it back together. So uh, why are you wearing a mask, Aaron? Ah, this is rust dust. <laughs> rust dust? I like future and think about him. Like safety. I thought maybe all the mouse crap that you came across. And that too. Yeah? <laughs> mouse crap, mouse nests. Yeah, so what are you uh, getting into? So I just uh, pulled the radio out here just so that I can tuck all the wires up out of the way off of the floor and uh, just clean up all the old mouse nests and all the mouse mouse doo-doo and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it was all up in the uh, in the ductwork for the fan and for the heater and uh, you can see it's all separated so I think it would be best that we pull it all and then adjust everything so we have a defroster. <laughs> Probably take the nests out so that it doesn't stink so much. As well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, none of the ductwork was attached? No, not no, of the A lot of the wires are chewed but uh, Basically, we're just getting this car ready for safety. The radio in that is perfect for the kids to actually work on. Um, they'll actually really enjoy that, hooking up a nice stereo for Rick. Um, we just basically brake lines, fuel lines, uh, fix the floor, any issues in the frame, and uh, lights, and get it running nice, and then it's off to his place, and it's perfect for them to tinker on it there. But this is kind of beyond the kids, right? So He's God's favorite, so we just gotta get it on the road, and I'm sure he'll be fine. <laughs> Well, got some floor pans here for the, the Corvette. Some nice new fresh ones. I'm gonna throw those in there. Didn't get such a good deal, but they were nice and close. So that makes it easy. Oh, passenger side here, got it all cut out real nice. And then we're just gonna, we sanded it up here. I'm just gonna drop it in, cut it all up yeah, so that it's level. <laughs> Seam seal it up, and then it'll be good to go. Uh, so onto the driver's side as well. Driver's side's cut out. It looks good without the rust in it, right? <laughs> it looks like a, 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 now it's not so daunting. You're like, oh, just lay the floor in there and, and you know, plug weld it and we yeah. got a decent car, yeah. And plus we met a cool guy who's got parts, right? Yeah, and he's yeah. Gonna, he, he did, like, that was good when we shook his hand. I went, he's gonna be okay. Yeah, yeah. And he said he'd help with used stuff. Give yeah, us a better so price. Uh, Northern Corvette sold us the floor pans. Uh, can't really do anything on new parts, but yeah, he's given us a T-top and everything. And one more uh, person in the community that knows you. And yeah. and uh, what a collection. And if uh, Northern Corvette, oh. holy cow. Yeah, so this was, this was donated to us about three months ago. Yep. Uh, two and a half, three months ago, Rich and I grabbed a truck and went up and got it and it was donated a guy who was moving and and he wants to be involved with truth for teens in some way and this car stays alive and we yeah. have a cool car to roll out to uh, holy car <laughs> holy car it's religious <laughs> uh, and uh, to roll out to, into a clarence street the car show every thursday night in port Coburn with young guys and uh so it's something cool for us to work on all the young guys love it yeah because yeah. of the uh, shape of it and uh and and so like i say cool corvette yeah and that's perfect to work with the kids in your shop so hopefully yeah. um you got a you donation the donation came through yeah right so yeah. we got some money to spend on your shop um so this summer we'll be uh working at his shop for a little bit and it'd be nice to get a bike in the car out there and start working out of port Colburn. so there'll be yeah. kind of two spots we'll still be working here uh odd days but the the goal is to kind of work in port Colburn have the car visible and just have people walking off the street, right? We had a uh, talk yesterday with some justice people about diversion programs with okay. young guys through the courts. Perfect. And so instead of a kid uh, getting in writing, uh, I'm sorry, I stole your car. Yeah. He's actually sitting with somebody who's- Forced to hang out with you. <laughs> he's terrible. forced to hang out with me. <laughs> and work on old cars, yeah. terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's just terrible, yeah. We got the dash back in again. And if you want to install the dash really easily, just take the floor out so you can stand up and you don't have to crawl underneath. It's very simple. Just about ready to uh, put the floors back in again. Got some and new fuel lines here as well. Right. So all new fuel lines, brake lines. Turn um, line, brake line. Yeah. So one EVAP line, not a big deal, but we're going to 
we've got the floors here. We punched out all the holes on the side. Uh, just left a little bit of overlap. So we'll uh, spot weld those in, drop it in. They're gonna fit? Yep. Okay. So thanks to Northern Corvette for hooking us up with some floor pans. Harder? Yeah. If this is gonna be hard, then the second one's gonna be even harder. Hey, we took the teak tops off for that reason, right? You can do the passenger side. There she is. Looks like a glove. I don't think we even have to weld that. <laughs> That's what we call our rich press fit. <laughs> nice, so we'll spot weld that. Plug weld everything. It's weird that it doesn't sit on the cross frame. Right? I, I yeah. Well, you didn't. <laughs> Take me on a date. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can't see this, but his knees are touching the steering column and his elbows are in his hips. <laughs> I don't know. What, what does it look like from underneath? Because I feel like this back corner is low. And I think the seat's tilted that way, so my back left needs to go up. Oh, that's not terrible. That just blocks all my gauges. Or we could put like a Tahoe seat on that side with the seven-way lumbar power. <laughs> a bit more? A bit more? Okay, what does that look like? Does the front right need to go down? Yeah. Front left? Yeah. That's better. Right. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. Yeah? Yeah, it looks well. We'll pull this seat out. I'll drill the holes. I'll weld this floor in. Yep. Do the same on the other side. Hey, I'm working on the Corvette today. People are like, oh, that's so cool. I'm like, no, it's a big rusty pile of crap. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's factory. I'm pretty sure it's factory. It's supposed to come with dual exhaust. Dual, yeah. How do we make a 180 horse 350 worse? Well, let's take a dual and turn, turn it into a speed. single. <laughs> and then transfer it to duals out the back again. Because we don't want to fake anything. <laughs> Just very little uh, plug weld, bang it tight, and then plug weld again. I'll run some beads on top and uh, seam seal the top and the bottom. And uh, that's a whole section, even the very front where it hits the fiberglass, you can see it uh, fits very nice. A couple other small odds and ends to get this baby back on the on the road again. But uh, Aaron did a really nice job lining up the doors again. And they open and close now. So that's nice. Uh, and then it's off to a body shop to get some paint done. Tomorrow, I gotta weld the driver's floor yet. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna get it running again. It's been a while. But uh, put a new water pump on it. Move that shiny alternator over from the 350 that went in the plow truck, it's got a nice shiny front water pump pulley now. So the chrome adds like three horsepower per square inch of chrome. So this thing's pushing out almost 800 horsepower now. So it's starting to babble because it's late. Just one more floor, then I'll go to bed. Here we go. We put a new fighter wall behind the tank, painted the tank, painted the frame rails, new brake lines, new fuel lines. Unfortunately, this thing won't start, so the procedure for starting, uh, diagnosing the starting is um, make sure your battery is good, and if it doesn't crank over, there's an open in the system somewhere. Thank you very much. Basically, I think there's two big wires, purple ones here, that probably feeds the starter and back, and then this is your neutral safety switch on your shifter, and somehow this connects these together, but I think just bypassing that... <laughs> All right, we got it turning over, we got the starter on, put some fuel in the tank, and see if we can get it running. So, I gotta get this thing off the hoist. Here we go. I think these tires are brand new. They still got the nubbies on there. I think those nubbies should come off, Aaron. Yeah, I think we should do a couple feelings. I, I think the, the nubbies need to come off. Get comfortable, just stay there. Just keep pumping. All right, hold it. Oh, I got a drop. I didn't say, you see I that? didn't say let go. As yes. Simon says, you let air in the system. Now I gotta start all over again. <laughs> We're early, so it doesn't matter right now, but. <laughs> okay, pump. <laughs> oh God. This is worse than hockey training. Better than hockey training. Better than hockey training. There's so many hockey things Hold it. 
There we go. We got fluid here anyways. We'll be doing burnouts before too long. Well, I wanted to burn out. I called Dave's on first burnout. <laughs> Northern Corvette. Uh, so it just came up with some good stuff for our Corvette build that we're doing for this summer. Uh, we needed a seat. So here we have a good core and uh, seat covers. Look at these, Rich. <laughs> Beautiful. Don't put your oh, hands yeah. on them. I'll, 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 I'll install those on a Sunday in the kitchen. Anyway. Yeah. And so seat covers. And this is one of the things I want to do with, with the guys is uh, hog ring pliers on a warm day, stretch them over. Uh, if the buns are still, the, the, the foam is still good in the seats. Uh, and, and so we can do this ourselves. It's part of the cosmetic thing we can do. Yep. Uh, brake, brake kit for the emergency. Brakes, it sounded like a drum kit inside of a yeah. inside of a disc, and they were, uh, you can't get them at a regular store. <laughs> no, I can't. all my suppliers, Northern Corvette was the only, the only yeah. place. And a door handle, because one was broken, and this is a mounting kit for the big piece, <laughs> which is our back bumper. Oh, nice. <laughs> the original urethane back bumpers, uh, oxygen and sunlight didn't do a good thing to them, and they just broke apart. They would just fracture apart. Eh? If you walked past them, they broke. And so this is a good replacement one. I forget what they're called. Flex something or other. Okay, yeah. and, uh, and then when we were leaving, and this is, was totally our fault. When we're leaving uh, Markham, the guy who donated the Corvette, he said to me, that door sticks. So the roof panel is unlocked. So he can reach in, but he and, and didn't and do tell that. me that. No, no, he told me. So we were driving, and we're doing about 10 kilometers an hour, and it just flopped into the ditch harmlessly, not hurting anybody, and we didn't notice and kept driving. So okay, that's the story, <laughs> and we're sticking to it. But when we told the Corvette guy, James, um, about this happening, he said, about once a month, I have somebody come in <laughs> for one of these. Because the way the Corvette is aerodynamically, yeah. they go like an ejector seat out, right? And guys forget to uh, lock up. Yeah. And so anyway, it's cool. Now we hit, now we can actually put the car outside. Yeah, we'll spend another day or two on it and then get it ready for safety. And then it's off to Dixon Auto Body for paint. So looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah. So to rebuild the steering cylinder, first off, you got to take it off, and where um, you take the nut off on the end of the rod here, that's no problem. It should slide right out of the bushings. On this end here, um, it goes through the drag link. So take the nut off, but don't take it all the way off. Leave it on about three, four threads, and then take a pry bar, stick it in, and and put pressure on it. And then the hole in the drag link, just tap that with a hammer and the vibration and the pressure on it will knock it out and then you don't damage this boot either. Even though you do get a new boot in the, the kit, it's just a nice way of uh, taking tie rods and anything steering to uh, part that way. So once you have it to get... <laughs> Hold on, I can do it. Holding the camera, tightening the vise. Okay, so once you have it apart, just. Take the rod in and out a bunch of times and empty this into a pail. Hold it upside down for that. Once you have the cylinder drained into a bucket, there's a little snap ring here. This one, just a couple nice pliers. That holds in a dirt seal and a backup washer and then the actual seal. So you need uh, a pick to pull them out and uh, you can use your dentist picks, flat screwdriver, and I also really like this one, the little hook, snap-on hook, great for popping off rad hoses. But I like this because it's round and it won't uh, risk damaging the rod. So inspect the rod, make sure it's not worn. Most of the wear will be in the middle of the cylinder. Once you have the, uh, the seals out, um, you just do whatever you got to do to jam it in and pry up without damaging this rod. Then it's just a matter of replacing the seal again with a piece of pipe that slides over top and fits on the seal properly. The first seal um, goes down over uh, with the open side towards the oil and the theory of that is that the oil goes in here and opens up the seal so it pushes against the outside and pushes towards the seal on the inside. Then the backup washer put that in and then the dirt seal is the opposite. You put that um, with, with the slot up and the point of that is so that dirt and stuff gets jammed in there and it actually push tight against the, the rod and the cylinder here and uh, create a nice seal. So um, that's all there is to, to rebuilding that. We'll throw that together. A piece of three quarter copper pipe is pretty well the perfect fit for it to push that seal down and tap it in and there you go.
So we decided to do uh, green, and the walls will be white. So really like a cottage, eh? We're gonna light it up this corner, and this fence will be gone, and this will be a park, an open park here. And then there'll just be that rolled gate that uh, stops you coming into this area. But you can see it, you know. So Chuck Rickman, who uh, is a contractor who start, did the roof for us and everything, donated the shingles, which is $1,600 that I can save towards the uh, old school Harley we're going to get for building here. So this front, we, we thought about saving it. Yeah. We're not going to. We are going to put a canopy Yeah. We're going to open this up to eight foot so we can do an eight foot rolled door here. Right. Um, which is fairly easy to do with an I-beam across and everything. So, you know, classroom in here, taking the dimensions and I'll order the wood and we'll start building it in here. And we'll have this ready May 2 for a weekend. So that's like when the car shows start and everything, we'll have our uh, opening here. Because that's the whole point of Ozzy's garage is, is be building something cool with uh, young guys, right? And so we'll build an old school 70s uh, shovel head. specific instructions that I'm not allowed to do burnouts. <laughs> so I guess I won't. Actually, I fit much better without the seats in here. <laughs> now it's made for a six foot three person. There's no room for any padding, so <laughs> here we go. Still a few kinks to work out, but uh, after the body shot, we'll worry about these little things when it comes back. So it's pretty well ready for safety. <laughs> Having a hood that opens isn't really a safety thing, I don't think. So. Wash my hands of this one. <laughs> Here we go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe because you never know what you're going to see next week on DeBoss Garage. If you like what you see, there's a lot of stuff happening to help support the channel. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich.